Hello, this is Michelle. Hey, Michelle. How you doing, man? Hey, Eric. Good to hear from you. I'm good. How are you doing? Oh, pretty good. Um, hey, you got a minute? Yeah, sure. What's up? Well, hey, the reason I was calling was I wanted to talk to you about a concern I've got with some stuff I see in the literature where, that's comparing organic versus conventional ag. What do you mean? Well, the other day I came across this organic versus conventional comparison paper that's focused on soil microbiology. At first, it seemed really interesting because soil microbiology is a really important part of soil management. But the organic versus conventional comparison was completely meaningless because there's no information on the management practices that were used in, in either the organic or the conventional plots. You know, this isn't the first time I've seen this type of thing being left out of a paper. Yeah, I've seen that too. You know, I often make organic versus conventional comparisons from our long-term farming systems project. But what I try to do is always be very specific about how we manage the various systems so that the leader can understand what factors are leading to the differences we see. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. You know, in our long-term trial, we've got eight different organic systems. Some of them are what I'd call well-managed organic systems, you know, with frequent cover crops between our vegetables. And other systems are real duds. They're fallow most winters. They have really low vegetable yields, and they've got terrible soil quality. But they're all certified organic. Ah, uh, yeah, I know. Uh, your experiment is a great illustration of that point, that not all organic systems are equal. You know, not all conventional systems are the same either. For example, conventional no-till versus conventional tilled systems can be very different in terms of soil quality. I think it's important to emphasize how much diversity there is in organic and conventional systems. The details are everything. You're right. You know what this actually makes me think? Uh-oh. What's that? Well, I think this year when we, when we go to the agronomy meeting in Long Beach, I think we ought to give a presentation where we highlight some of the problems with making organic versus conventional comparisons. Hey, that's a good idea. We could use our experience managing the long-term system studies in California and Maryland to highlight why the details are important. That's a great idea. So, so, you know, what do you think our take-home message would be? Uh, let me see. First, we should probably acknowledge that we're not the first to make this point. And secondly, stress that researchers need to be very careful to provide enough details on specific management practices within both organic and conventional systems. So what, what type of specifics do you think should always be provided? I'll, I'll start writing them down as we list them. Soil type. That sounds good. Probably crop rotation. Yeah, crop rotation for sure. Uh, what kind of fertilizer inputs, especially if they're animal manures or otherwise? Probably irrigation management. That's, that's critical in California. Yeah, irrigation can be important in Maryland too. How about tillage? Yeah, that's a good start. You know, an associated issue is that sometimes differences between conventional and organic systems are just due to specific management practices like whether a cover crop is used or not in one system and not the other? That's right. I mean, that's like in our long-term trial, whether or not a cover crop's used or not is, is really the defining difference between our good and our bad systems. Um, you know what I was thinking, Michelle, is we could actually take our presentation a step further at this, uh, if we do this at this conference, and we could do it by video, and then we could leave a lot of time, you know, to discuss uh, kind of get feedback from the audience and, and see what they thought about this issue. Yeah, I guess that might work. It is, after all, an organic group. Who knows? Maybe it'll help our colleagues remember why these comparisons are a devil without details. I think that's a, that's a good idea because, you know, people like to watch videos. Yeah. Also, didn't you tell me that a scientist that's become a filmmaker is the closing keynote speaker at this conference? Oh yeah, that's, uh, uh, what's his name, Randy Olson. He wrote a really interesting book called um, Don't Be Such a Scientist. Uh, you know, it's about how to do a better job of communicating their science. And making a fun video should be a good way to do that. You bet, man. Hey, look out, Hollywood. Here comes the scientist. <laughs>